in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brother and sister, fraternal greetings to you and warm welcome to Carmel Light, reflection on the day's readings. It's the 5th of June, Saturday of the ninth week in ordinary time. This day is marked as World Environment Day by UN. And today we celebrate the memorial of Saint Boniface, Bishop and Martyr. Larissa will give us more details about Saint Boniface. On the 5th of June, we venerate Saint Boniface, a monk of Exeter in England, one of the great figures of the Benedictine order and of the monastic apostolate in the Middle Ages. He well earned the title of Apostle of Germany, and Catholic Germany in our own times still venerates him as its father in the faith. Named Winifred by his well-to-do English parents, Boniface was born probably near Exeter in Devon. As a boy, he studied in Benedictine monastery schools and became a monk himself in the process. For thirty years he lived in relative peace, studying, teaching and praying. In his early forties he left the seclusion of the monastery to do missionary work on the continent. Boniface's first missionary endeavour proved unsuccessful. Before attempting a second, he went to Rome and received papal authorization. Under the holy bishop Willibrod, he converted Phrygia within a period of three years. On November 30th, 722, Boniface was consecrated bishop by Pope Gregory II. In 724, he turned his attention to the Hessian people, among whom he continued his missionary activity with renewed zeal. On an eminence near the village of Gesma on the Edda, he felled a giant oak that the people honoured as the national sanctuary of the god Thor. Boniface used the wood to build a chapel in honour of St. Peter. This courageous act assured the eventual triumph of the gospel in Germany. The resident clergy and the priests dwelling at the court, whose unworthy lives needed censure, were constantly creating difficulties. Nevertheless, Boniface continued to labor quietly, discreetly. He prayed unceasingly, put his trust in God alone, recommended his work to the prayers of his spiritual brothers and sisters in England, and God did not abandon him. Conversions were amazingly numerous. In 732, Gregory III sent him the pallium, the insignia of the archiepiscopal dignity. Boniface now devoted his time and talent to the ecclesiastical organization of the church in Germany. He installed worthy bishops, set diocesan boundaries, promoted the spiritual life of the clergy and laity, held national synods, and in 744, founded the monastery of Fulda, which became a centre of religious life in central Germany. In 745, he chose Mainz for his archiepiscopal see and affiliated to it 13 suffragan dioceses. This completed the ecclesiastical organisation of Germany. The final years of his busy life were spent as were his earlier ones in missionary activity. Word came to him in 754 that a part of Phrygia had lapsed from the faith. He took leave of his priests and, sensing the approach of death, carried along a shroud. He was 74 years of age when, with youthful enthusiasm, he began the work of restoration, a mission he was not to complete. A band of semi-barbarous pagans overpowered and put him to death when he was about to administer confirmation to a group of neophytes at Dorkham. Boniface was a man of action, but he was also sensitive to the feelings of those with whom he came in contact. His organizing genius and loyalty to Rome influenced Germany's Christianity for centuries. 
He is the patron of brewers, tailors, Germany and Prussia. Placing all our petitions before him today, let us pray. May the martyr St. Boniface be our advocate, O Lord, that we may firmly hold the faith he taught with his lips and sealed in his blood and confidently profess it by our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. My dear brother and sister, for our reflection today, we have chosen the Gospel from Mark chapter 12, verses 38 to 44. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, in his teaching, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and like greetings in the marketplaces and have the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feasts, who devour widows' houses and for a pretense, make long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. And he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly, I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The story of the widow's might demonstrates powerfully the humility and lowliness that so pleases Jesus. We can tend to think that being humble means allowing other people to take advantage of us. But this widow demonstrated that true humility means radical dependence on God. The widow's humility is even more remarkable when she is compared with those who put large sums into the temple treasury. Many of these donors were probably giving the amount required by law by the law yet it was still money they could spare consequently they could go away satisfied with their contribution but failing to grasp how god wanted them to depend on him for everything in contrast the widow's donation was only the smallest of coins, but, but it was all she had to live on. It is significant that Mark placed this story before Jesus' description of the final judgment. Mark chapter 13 verses 1 to 37, the next chapter. When the Lord returns 
will he find a people who are humble and ready willing to surrender their lives totally to him or will he find a people full of pride and arrogance who have no room for him in their hearts the widow had the faith to believe that even if she gave god everything she had to live on he would never let her down he was worth everything she had and she willingly placed herself in his hands today in prayer ask the lord to make you more like this poor widow more trusting and more dependent on him her contribution to the treasury as small as it was was the one way that she could repay god for all he had done for her and her people and this is how god wants us to be as well he wants us to join her in praying father in comparison to what you have done for me i have so little to offer but what i do have i give to you come and take my life know that your disposition of dependence and humility pleases jesus it opens the door to a deeper relationship with him and it brings great blessings as jesus promised us blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven Heavenly Father I come to you with the humble heart knowing that you alone can fill my every need amen My dear brother and sister in the first reading and the corresponding responsorial from the book of tobit the angel raphael proclaims the importance of giving god the glory that is due as one realizes how mightily god works in the lives of those who seek to do god's will let's thank god through these words of the bible your response blessed is god who lives forever blessed is god who lives forever blessed is god who lives forever and blessed is his kingdom because he chastises and he shows mercy He leads down to Hades below the earth and he himself raises up again from great devastation and there is nothing that can escape his hand Blessed is God who lives forever Acknowledge him O sons of Israel before the nations for he himself has scattered you among them and he has shown you his greatness even there Blessed is God who lives forever. And now see what he has done with you. Acknowledge him with your full voice and bless the Lord of righteousness and exalt the king of the ages. Blessed is God who lives forever. I acknowledge him in the land of my captivity and I show his power and majesty. to a nation of sinners blessed is god who lives forever let all men speak and acknowledge him in jerusalem blessed is god who lives forever 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Prayer for Relief from the Coronavirus Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic. We pray that the vaccine be available for all our people, even the poor and those in rural areas. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Novena Prayer to Our Lady of Mount Carmel In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Mother of God, we greet you as Queen and Mother of Carmel. You were raised from being a lowly handmaid to the great dignity of the Mother of the Word Incarnate. We dedicate ourselves as an act of filial homage. We glorify the Holy Trinity by honoring you, and in our many needs we have recourse to your protection and your powerful intercession. Jesus, your Son, was so obedient to you on earth, will certainly grant your petitions on our behalf. With this trust and unbounded confidence, we beseech you to hear our prayers and obtain for us of your Divine Son the favors we request in this novena. Having experienced the efficacy of your prayers, we are full of confidence that you will gain for us this favor if it is for the glory of God and for our good. Amen. Let us pray for our petitions. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, and sought thine intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, 
and blessed is the fruit of your womb Jesus Holy Mary mother of God pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen Our Lady of Mount Carmel pray for us Thanksgiving prayer Holy Mother of God and Queen of Carmel we your children come before you in a spirit of filial devotion and gratitude as mother of our spiritual life you have obtained for us innumerable graces and blessings from our heavenly father who has given to us through you the greatest of all treasures Christ our lord we recognize with deep sentiments of thankfulness all the spiritual favors that have come to us through your powerful intercession in particular we thank you for your special protection over those who wear your holy scapular with faith and love and finally we thank you for answering our prayers in our personal needs we implore from you the great grace of final perseverance that we remain faithful to the end to your son our lord jesus christ who is lord forever and ever amen let's pray for god's blessing may the lord jesus be with you to defend you may he be with you to sustain you may he go before you to show you the way may he follow you to guard you from above may he bless you with the father and the holy spirit who lives and reigns forever and ever amen in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen my dear brother and sister we remember today all those who are celebrating their birthdays especially father bonifes de souza carmelite father zuse anton sous carmelite father valerian fernandes from manglo diocese wish you all a happy birthday god bless you we join with ayona kutino from nalasopara mumbai in thanking god for all the blessings and also in praying for god's blessings then we pray for the departed soul of lena kutina from yadapadau mangalore may the lord grant her eternal rest that's all for today my dear friends have a great weekend see you tomorrow bye bye